Hi, welcome to the 3D Pen Den. Ever since I started working with 3D Pen, I have been exploring new ways of building things to get to a more precise 3D shape. If you are just starting out with 3D Pen, you may have noticed that tracing 2D designs is fun and relatively easy. The challenge is to get from a flat lizard to a 3D one. So let's briefly look at how it's usually done and then at this new alternative building technique that I just started using, which I call clay forming. Why do we even need new ways of building? What's wrong with the old ones? We need them because it's not one size fits all. You would proceed differently if you are making a large vessel or a basket or a 16 inch ball or a project that calls for smooth patterned or embossed surface. And yes, all these links are in the description. For those of you who are just starting out with 3D pen, this is one of the most common ways to build small sculpture that you will encounter on the internet. And it works. Trace one view of the sculpture in 2D. In this case, the top view. That's the easy part. Then we'll add parts of the other views, front or side view, whatever makes more sense in this case. Lift them and attach them to the bottom. And eventually connect them by bridging in between. Precise curves are very hard to do consistently in the air. So it's best to make them on a flat, completely supported surface where you don't fight gravity. This requires some careful planning, as we will see in a minute. If you tape the parts to something square, it will help you maintain the right angle and give you the third hand to work with. Make sure to let each new connection cool before removing the support. There is not enough room for a square dowel, interlocking tweezers are a good alternative to keep things up. said you will need some careful planning. Here's the part where mine apparently wasn't careful enough. The slope of the tapered tail is not going downward as I want it, but goes higher than the previous curve. Not good. Fortunately, that's a fixable problem.
bag. You will get those if you are not watching your timing. Also fortunately fixable. And then you keep adding on until you get a dense enough network that you can work over. works but it makes you long for the good old times when with any pliable medium you could get a good tapered shape in under 15 seconds. Wait! Hold that nostalgic thought a minute. Enter Play-Doh, a 54 cent solution for a complete control. What if we try to sculpt the third dimension out of something pliable? and then simply trace it. Tracing is easy, remember? We'll start with the easy part and trace the 2D picture. Then add the 15 second clay carrot, press it into the outline and first excavate the plastic outline to get your shape back. shaping the third dimension until you get exactly what you want. This may take a while if you are a fussy sculptor, but not any longer than planning and attaching all those arches. If you are used to sculpting with a pliable medium, this method will give you your ease and control back. And if you are new to sculpting, it will teach you how. Because you are dealing with just adding the third dimension, which makes it more manageable. The first two are already provided by the image you just traced. Learning to sculpt from scratch the traditional way is possible, but it could be frustrating enough to quit. So try both methods and see what works better for you. Once you are happy with the basic shape, the last thing to do is clean the green line again because that's where we plan to land the tracing strands. Now, the Play-Doh has a completely non-stick surface and that's how you want it to be able to get it out cleanly later. So don't expect to be able to draw directly on it. What it will allow you to do, though, is to stretch the plastic strands around it. Following the exact shape you just created with no trouble from gravity. There are several fringe benefits of having the clay underneath for the whole process of covering and even smoothing. Layering and densing up the network is easier when the clay support is there. Because you don't get the sags of gravity and the cave-ins, which happen when the new hot plastic you are adding softens the structure that's already there.
some legs. Avoid touching the hot nozzle of the pen to the strand that's coming out of it, or any other strand for that matter, or it will stick and cause trouble. Also, never ever dig into the clay with the pen nozzle, or you may clog it. bonus of the clay being inside it is that you can plan your eye placement and leave an opening for the eye posts at the appropriate locations. Just stick the eye post right in it and here I already put a strand in my way so I'll have to fix that momentarily. Now let's remove the strand that's in the way of the other eye. Also gets a bit easier with the underlying support of the clay. Because your network doesn't have to be all that dense, you can get away with fewer layers. The clay will catch it. Another thing it will let you do, if you so choose, is a bit of pre-smoothing. If you apply your fill in smaller enough patches, you can gently compress each tile and make the strands partially merge. You will still probably need to smooth and sand, but not as much. 
I usually turn my pen all the way up to ABS even when I'm working with PLA because it melts it a bit more which gives me a chance to pat it either with my finger or some rubber tool and get it smoother. If you tried this without the clay support you would deform the project or cave right in. I will do the feet separately and attach them later. Right now let's remove the clay. You don't want to let it harden in there or it won't come out easily. The main chunk usually comes out very easily and cleanly. The very skinny parts are a bit harder and you may need a rubber tool or a skinny knitting needle. But because the Play-Doh is so non-stick, it will come out completely clean without much trouble. And you can use it over and over again if you treat it right. Speaking of which, not all clays are suitable for this process. Here are some basics you want to watch for. The clay needs to be non-stick, so it comes out easily, clean, and by that I mean anything that gets your hands, tools and surfaces looking like this will also get your project unacceptably dirty. That eliminates ceramics and most air dry clays. And then it also needs to be chemically non-reactive. Make sure there is no chemical compound in the clay that would dissolve the plastic filament you are using. So be cautious about polymer clays because they have plasticizers in them and that residue could react with the plastic over time. If you are not sure what's in the clay, stick with Play-Doh. It's not particularly known for sculpting fine detail, but otherwise it checks all the boxes and it's a benign compound since it's made for two-year-olds. If it feels like your Play-Doh is drying out, dunk it in water and then put it back into the airtight box overnight and it will recover. Do not overdo this. Just the water that clings to the surface is enough to reconstitute it. And occasionally you can knead a teaspoon of glycerin into it to keep it non-stick. Makes it last for many repeated uses. I have been using this same can of it now for about two months. Lastly, what do you do if you live somewhere where you don't get this kind of Play-Doh? There is a way to make this at home and if you need to know, please leave me a note in the comments and I will make a video on the recipe for do-it-yourself homemade Play-Doh. So this is the clay forming process. Here are the results of both methods side by side. Personally, I get a better control over the shape with the clay forming method. But if your old technique works for you, keep using it. And if you are finding what's out there hard, don't just give up. Give this one a try. So how do we get from these formed shapes to a finished lizard? There is still way to go. And we need to talk about finishing techniques first. So we will have to finish the lizard in a future video. And until then, go and make something.